Hi there. I'm Vlad, and this question is for Sam, but I'd love to hear Brian's thoughts as well. Um, Sam, you see our efforts to make moral progress as us navigating the landscape of possible states of consciousness, and the way to navigate that space is uh, through science. Uh, I would generally agree with this, but I think that there are certain categories of navigation problems to which science cannot provide an objective answer due to the fact that there are many types of beneficial mental states that are qualitatively different from each other and not readily comparable. So for example, mm. loving another person, or the joy of working to create something, or mindfulness, helping others, etc. Right. And it may be the case that achieving a peak in one area, let's say intense meditation or mindfulness, may necessitate suffering in another area, let's say the love that comes from close personal relationships. So my question is, how can we ever determine which is more important? How can science help us navigate when realizing one beneficial conscious state is in conflict with realizing another beneficial but qualitatively different conscious right. state? And you want me to weigh in on this too? Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. You, can, you can say as much as I said about dark matter. <laughs> Uh, well, so uh, there's a couple of intuitions there that I would just want to push on. One is the, the idea that not being able to answer th those questions uh, is a problem for, the, for the, the claim that there is an answer to those questions. So, so this is, in my book, The Moral Landscape, I, I differentiated answers in practice from answers in principle. There, we know there are, there are many facts of the matter for which there, there are answers in principle, and trivially easy answers in principle, just, just integer-based answers. You know, like how many grains of sand are there on Earth, right? You know, as long as we define grain of sand clearly enough, you know, that is an integer answer. Um, and yet we know we'll never have access to that information, and it probably just changed anyway, right? So, uh, uh, you know, or even simpler, you know, how many, the, the example I've often used is, you know, how many birds are in flight over the surface of the Earth at this moment, right? Well, it just changed, and we know we're never going to get the data. So, but there was there was an answer to that question. Uh, there are other kinds of questions where there there are no clear answers, but there's there are ranges of answers. There's kind of a blurry, you know, uh, haze around the right answer, uh, and it's and some of these are just norms of you know, just how we run society. It's like, well, what's the right age to give someone a driver's license? Well, you know, when I was 15 and a half, I thought, you know, 16 was, was probably a little too late. Uh, now, when I drive and I look over and I see a 16-year-old behind the wheel of a, a 4,000-pound automobile, I think that looks insane to me, right? <laughs> so self-driving cars can't come soon enough. But, but what is the, what's the right answer? Well, given all things considered, like, so, and it's, a, so it's an all things considered situation where we, we know we can never do this perfectly. We know that some 16-year-olds are really not up to it, but we have to draw the line somewhere. Wherever we draw the line, it's going to be arbitrary. 16 is arbitrary. 16 and a half is ar arbitrary. 18 would be arbitrary. And, y and, there's, and yet, it's, we know there are wrong answers. We know that six months is definitely the wrong answer. Right? <laughs> so if you shift the window of consideration there, so you're, just, you're not capturing anything we care about. If you move it to, to 16, well, you're, you know, not, if we moved it to 25, you know, fewer people would die. There's no question, right? But we have other concerns beyond body count. We have, you know, mothers and fathers who are just sick of driving their kids to school every day, right? <laughs> so what's that worth? And we, 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 we play around with this, and we know we're never going to do the math sufficiently so that we know, to, you know, down to our toes, that we've got it perfectly right, right? But it doesn't mean that there aren't better and worse answers in that space. We know there are worse answers. You know, six months you know, just gets you absolutely nowhere, and 100 also doesn't work, right? So uh, the answer is somewhere along this continuum. And, and for many things in life, we have to be satisfied with that. Now, I think we'll, we, we will be less and less satisfied the more we can get our hands on really good data and the more our technology allows us to, to use that data in ways. And I think, that, and I think this will be surprising. So I mean, just, I mean, this, is, this is true in medicine in many ways. It's like, like when there's nothing to do about a condition, 
right? There is no cure, there's no understanding of its basic biology, and yet people are suffering mightily. You know, it's like polio, right? People are, are it, was, it used to be a common feature of life, even in the most uh, affluent areas, that people would, would be hobbled and killed by polio, right? Now, we've lost sight of that horror because we have a, we have a, a vaccine for polio and have had it you know, for as long as, as most of us have been alive. Um, now, preventing polio is a trivially easy thing to do, and if you, if you decided, I mean, those, the people who are you know, against vaccines across the board or, or so worried about the possibility that they have some other downside or, who, or kind of preventing uh, their kids from, from getting vaccinated, um, you know, in a very local area, it may not cause a problem for them or the people around them, but if enough people do it, we'll be back to the days of polio, right? And so that, so like, that is clearly no place worth going, right? And it becomes, you know, you, you move from an environment in which you have this devastating thing for which there's nothing to do and, and you just gotta sort of pray it doesn't happen to you, to it's a trivially easy solve and you're irresponsible if you don't do it. Right, and, and, and those, we will continually be buffeted around by those kinds of changes based on knowledge and, and, and changes in technology. Uh, but I, my main resistance to the, to the question is the idea that a lack of answers in practice means that there are no answers in principle, uh, and, and that a blurry boundary around the right answer uh, means that the difference between better and worse, or, and even much, much better and much, much worse, uh, goes out the window. I think, that's, I think we, we still have that, no matter how dimly we understand our situation on any of these things. So, yeah, I hope that made sense. I mean, you know, let me just, uh, yeah, go for it. again, the only thought that occurs to me, and uh, I may not be fully appreciating the nuance of the question, so apologies, but one of the things that we certainly teach to our students you know, standard physics issue with students is um, it's critical to pose a well-formed question. And a well-formed research question is one that's not over-determined, not under-determined, but it's one that has an answer. And that's a very hard step to get to, to properly frame a question so that there is a procedure by which an answer can emerge because the system is not underdetermined, it's not overdetermined, it's not self-contradictory, and there is a unique answer to be found. And, and the issues that you're describing are ones that typically are underdetermined. So I'm a little bit confused when you say, you know, the answer is somewhere between here and here. What do you mean by the answer? Well, I mean, the, it's an underdetermined question. In this case, right? well, you know, what should be the driving age? No, no, I understand right? the question, yeah. but it's an underdetermined question. There is no right answer to it based on the, it's not a well-posed question. I mean, you can make decisions, like you say, and various people will come up with different propositions for what the good policy should be, but there is no the answer in the sense that there's, you know, there is an electron magnetic moment, right? There is a the answer in that situation, because it's a question that's posed in a specific way. But, the, so, but there is a, a, gradient, a gradient, and if you go far enough in one direction, Absolutely. You, you can feel yourself getting you know, colder, 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 colder. Totally got that. And then you go back warmer, 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 